All right, everybody. Hey, this is Frankie Slauson, and welcome to another edition of the Frankie Slauson Show, where we're doing interviews with anybody that's doing anything that has to do with anything with entertainment. And uh, around my area, we have you know, a lot of people that uh, are known in the area of northern Minnesota for some of the things that they do involved with entertainment. And this is a local fellow from uh, Crookston, Minnesota, which is only probably about about an hour away from where I live in Greenbush. Uh, he is a radio DJ and somebody who has a, a love for the blues. His name is Kevin Hendrickson, and how the heck are you? Well, I'm badly the cold, as you can probably tell by my voice, but uh, I'll do the best I can. I'll hang in there. Oh, that's fine. Hey, you know what? Uh, even, even when I don't have a cold, some people still think I have a cold. So, you know what? It, it works <laughs> both ways. <laughs> so, I'm going to start asking you some questions, and... Uh, and we'll just kind of go in. The first question for you is, how did you get started to a DJ? A DJ? Well, uh, I tell you what, my three older brothers, and they were always uh, playing music when they were in high school and, and beyond that. And I didn't play any instruments, and I can't sing. I, maybe I could with some <laughs> teaching, but I, I'm not a talented musician. I did play some harmonica, but at that time I didn't, and I wanted to stay involved in the music industry, and that was what I figured was the quickest way to stay into it. So I went to radio school right out of high school. My dad had given me a transistor radio when I was about 10, and I got hooked on radio. So I thought, well, if I can do radio and play great music like the classic rock, that's what I'm going to do. So that's how I ended up getting started. I went to Brown Institute uh, right out of high school back in the late 70s and been in the business for 35 years now. And it's something that's always been a passion of yours, huh? Oh, definitely. I, 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 <laughs> I hear people on the radio that shouldn't be on the radio, and <laughs> uh, I just uh, that's why I still pursue it. Yeah, I, I hear you on that one. There's a lot of people that... Uh, I think the uh, need to learn the the reading skills and actually more or less and I'll say for around my area I'm not gonna name names but I'm just gonna say uh, certain <laughs> stations that I listen to around here uh, they need to be a little bit more entertaining you know I mean if you're gonna be a DJ you want to let people you want to make people think that you're a very interesting person so you want to make the best uh, type of show that you can possibly make and and hence that's something that you've done. Yeah. Well, back in the 70s, you know, people that were on the radio were entertaining. Uh, it's not that way anymore, really. Uh, you know, you have your morning shows where they're, they're reading, uh, reading things uh, called show prep, you know, which is stuff written by them, by, by other people, is what I mean. And yeah. so uh, I try to use my own material. I try to be topical, um, you know, and uh, if you are... If you are yourself on the radio, people seem to be attracted to that. So, who are who are some of your heroes in in the radio? Oh business? my goodness! <laughs> uh, back in the day, the first rock and roll station in Grand Forks was fourteen forty AM KKXL, and the weird beard Kurt Martin comes to mind first of all. Uh, they had several other people there, but, you know, uh, the names kind of uh, elude me at the moment. Yes. The Weird Beard Kurt Martin was always one of these guys who always had something to say. And he did a lot of sock hops around the area, you know, the mobile DJ thing. Sure. I, that's where I got my inspiration. I wanted to do that. Did you ever get inspired and, by, like, uh, Wolfman Jack at all or anything? I, as a matter of fact, yeah, one of my... Uh, my first program director, I started radio out in Dickinson, North Dakota, and uh, <laughs> the guy I worked for, the program director there was real character, and he was kind of like a Wolfman Jack in a way. As a matter of fact, he had talked to Wolfman Jack at one time and says, what's the most memorable thing in radio for you? And Wolfman told him, he says, I remember when I could call him sick. <laughs> because when you're the wolf man, you can't afford to call in sick. You gotta be there. Yep. And, and but I worked with a lot of real crazy characters in the early seventies or late seventies, I should say, and the early eighties. And 
uh, you know, those characters have basically left the business now. So, so how would you rate yourself as a host? Like, like personally, like, like one to ten, like uh, ten being the most interesting, one being the most boring. How would you kind of rate yourself as a as a DJ uh, to your audience? Well, I, if if I'm going to be interviewing somebody, I always try and make them more interesting uh, because you're basically trying to put them into the spotlight. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, from what I hear on the radio news, I'm going to give myself about a seven. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's fair enough. Uh, do you think that, you, that you've grown a pretty big fan base because of the Riverside, uh, Riverside Blues show? Well, it's uh, funny you should mention that. The other day, somebody had posted on Facebook that they didn't know that my blues show had gotten back on the air in Grand Forks. Uh-huh. And when they found out that I was back on, they said, well, that's great, because not having that show would be like Grand Forks without a red pepper and without <laughs> a, uh, <laughs> and without the romantics or whatever they called the plain brown rapper. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I kind of felt like, well, maybe I am somewhat of an institution in some people's minds. I guess. I suppose if you've been if you've been doing this uh, the show for a long time and people are people are used to their traditional, well, it was on when like on Sundays, I believe, or was Sunday it on Sunday mornings? Yeah, Sunday it's still mornings. there, ten a.m. to one p.m. every Sunday, and I've been yeah. doing it for about fourteen years now. And how did uh, the show get started? Well, I had been living in California and came back looking for a job around here and asked uh, Brian Lee Rivers at KJ108 if they did a blues show. And they said they were going to run a syndicated show, and I said, no, let's do it local. And that's kind of how it got started. I figured it would last maybe three, six months, maybe. Uh But it's gone on to uh, 14 years now. And... uh yeah, I mean, I I believe uh, uh, that show uh, will definitely go down in history as because you don't really you don't really find many local DJs put together actual shows anymore. Most of the time, most of the you hear now is just syndicated. I wonder why that is. Well, I think that there is so much syndication available out there that. It's, and it's it's usually pretty much a, a trade deal for radio stations, so they can get a big name uh-huh. for basically nothing by running ads for national companies. Yeah, because it seems so like... So I uh, think that... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that kind of took away from all the local personalities. Uh-huh. And if you, if you weren't a, a big-time name, you know... Uh, it's tough to compete with the people, you know, like Casey Case and stuff like that. And when I was younger and started in radio, I used to listen to him a lot. Thought, God, if I could just get that more. <laughs> yeah. I could, I could get up, but, you know. I, I don't like being a, like all big fish in the woman. I like to keep it local. I don't really do it national other than it being available online, so. Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that because I can talk about local activities. Yeah, and and it's it's kind of like, too, because uh, there's a station that I listen to that I will mention uh, around here called Wild 102, and I and on the weekends it seems like they're always syndicated. You know, you never hear anybody do, like, a, just a local, a local show at all. Right, and I, I always... You know, I, I love doing the library you know, because I can look window and tell you what it's doing. Yeah. But if it's somebody in Texas or Los Angeles or Chicago, you know, they can't tell you what's going on outside your window. No. No, they can't. But uh, there was one other question that I had to do with uh, not just the show, but like... Uh, I have a friend, or, who, or somebody who I met at college at Northland about 10 years ago, who uh, became a big success. Nobody thought he ever would be, but he became a very success, and I, and my friend is uh, Bob Hooley, Little Bobby from Little Bobby of the Storm, and I know that you guys are, are friends, so how did you guys get connected with each other? I just kind of think that he brought some music to me one day. And wanted me to play it on the radio, and when I listened to it, I looked at him and I said, do you really want me to play that on the radio? <laughs> and he says, what do you mean? I said, 
I think you could do better. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was just trying to be honest with the guy because uh, the original recording I think he brought me, they did in a trailer house uh -huh. somewhere in the backwoods of Thief River. And so he came uh, he came up with uh, more recordings, uh, done better, and I just started to play them on the radio. And I don't know, he tells me that if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't be playing blues anymore. Well, so. he, he's, he's definitely come a long way, and... And uh, we, we, uh, you and I, pre I'm pretty sure know his his personal story of, of like how it how it was for him in in the beginning of his life to where he's at now, uh, because he he oh. probably never thought he'd ever be uh, playing music for a living either, you know. Right. Yeah. He's had uh, some ups and downs in life. Let's yeah. just put it that way. He's with the wife of the blues. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he knows how to play, and, and I met him in, at Northland about 10 years ago, and, and when I found out that he was a singer, when he came out, when he uh, gave us a copy of his, uh, like, a demo that he did, I was pretty uh, blown away by that, because uh, I didn't know hardly anybody that sang at all. None of my friends ever sang or did music at all. I mean, some of my dad's friends from way back in the day did, but... but that was when I was before I was even born. So to know somebody that's actually doing music, let alone the blues, I thought was pretty interesting because he also did a, a show at Pioneer Night for one called the Blues One on One Show. I don't know if you were aware of that at all. Yeah, right. Yeah, he doesn't do it anymore, but um, I think I inspired him to do that too. <laughs> but you know, I'm not because I hung out with musicians so much when I was younger. I'm not really intimidated by them, so it's easy for me to start a conversation with them. Oh, sure. And if, if you know Bobby at all, I mean, he's a great guy to sit and talk to, and, and uh, you know, he's he's not arrogant in, by any means, uh, and he just does it for the love of the music, and that's why I got into radio. So, so it just kind of has snowballed. So what do you uh, what do you like most about the blues genre? more than any other genre of music? Well, for one, you can hear the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, for the most part, uh, you can understand, and then you uh, you also can absorb the feeling of the artist. In most cases, it's pretty easy to uh, understand what they're saying as far as their feelings and, and what went into the song. And, you know, it's it's uh, easy on the ears, let's put it that way. Sure. Is there like a... Uh, most, uh, oh, go like, ahead. Like heavy metal. Heavy metal, I'm not going to take anything away from heavy metal, but it's, I, I can't relate. Uh-huh. I, I wasn't that angry when I was a young man. <laughs> <laughs> I call it angry young man music. And that's fine for some people, but... You know, and I like all different types of music. You, you name it, I like it, but... I guess the blues to me was just something that kind of, you know, I used to see bands and I didn't even know they were playing blues, but I sure appreciated it. So, uh, have you ever been to any, I, I think this is probably a stupid question that I'm asking you, but, but I'm going to ask you anyway, have you ever been to any big blues concerts or festivals that you that you have good memories from? Well, you had a Blues Music Awards in Memphis, Tennessee last May. Uh, I took a trip down there with little Bobby and a couple of other friends. Okay. And all the big names that got nominated were basically on stage that night. Oh, wow. You have, you have a great dinner, and then we were about four tables from the stage. Oh, jeez. Tab Benoit, the Entertainer of the Year. And, oh, jeez. Uh, the list goes on and on. But, but the Blues Music Awards, that was probably the best show I've seen. Seven hours of the big names. And how, how did you get invited? Just because you were doing radio? Yeah, Bobby uh, felt obligated <laughs> to uh, offer me a ticket. I did have to pay for the ticket, but, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it was an opportunity for me to kind of explore the bigger realm of the blues world and kind of rub elbows with some of the bigger names out there. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure it was a good experience for you, too, if you've never experienced something like that. Well, it's pretty cool when you you know you you go down and uh, have a cigarette outside, and there's Kenny Wayne Shepherd, and you <laughs> kind of casually start a conversation with a somebody who's you know that big of a name, and that that's true of all the artists. They're they're just hanging out, just like everybody else. 
Oh yeah, it's a it's a, the only thing that's different is, is that their their names are phenomenal and and ours are kind of small. But uh, but I wouldn't say your name. I say I'd say you're you built kind of a legacy for yourself, even if you if you weren't trying to, even if it's just a job because you love doing it. But you still people know your show. People know you from the show, and people know that you have a passion for what you enjoy doing. So that's always impressive. And that always feeds right back into why I keep doing it, too. I mean, when the show was off the air for about six months, so many people asked about it, so I felt it was almost an obligation to get it back on the air somehow. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, 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 that's, 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 why, yeah, that's cool. And, yeah, uh, it's, it's for the love of the music. I mean, I'm not getting rich doing the show, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> No, but you're but you but you love it, and that's why you keep it. Yeah. There you go. That's what it's all about. It's all about the music. So here, here's a segue. Then here's a segue question. If you did do radio. What would you want to do for a profession? Wow. <laughs> uh, I like to cook. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily like to clean the pots and the pans, but I do like to cook. Okay. Uh, that or a male gigolo or something <laughs> like that. Would we have seen Kevin Hendrickson host his own show on the Food Network or what? <laughs> uh, well, it would be kind of fun to have the blues artists come in and show me what they can cook. Oh, yeah. I think... Uh, that would be kind of a neat little show. I think... Uh, if you, you ever watching the Emerald Lagasse show at all on the Food Network? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah remember yeah, remember sure. when he would have like uh, Willie Nelson or somebody come in and... Uh, Yep. Yeah, perform music, but also cook and all that. Yeah, that that would be kind of that'd be kind of cool to do something like that. Like what you know, if you had an idea like that or whatever. Well, yeah. The other cool thing is Daryl Hall from Hall and Oats. Huh. Uh, has a program on Sunday nights. I don't know if you get it up there, but he brings in musicians into his own house. He has a studio in his basement, huh. and he feeds them. You know, gives them a couple of cocktails, and they get together and they jam and. Wow. I think that would be really cool to that'd, do something like that. That'd be the sweet life right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, food, music, and drink. Yeah, that, that. nothing better than that, you know. So, uh, <laughs> what do you think radio will become in the next ten years? I that scares me. <laughs> it really scares me. Um, I'm kind of hoping that some of these big corporate-owned stations end up back in the hands of local people. Yeah. You know, the way it used to be, sure. local hometown kind of things where you could uh, get some of the local entertainers on there. And that's why I try to do, you know, some regional entertainment, too, as, long as, as well as the uh, nationally known names. But I would like to see these big corporate radio companies break up and sell off their stations. <laughs> so that, you yeah. know, uh, so that... I, I'm I'm sorry to say, but in ten years, you're going to have a choice of like one station of every format. There's only going to be one country station, one rock station, one you know blues station, whatever the case might be, and that's what you're going to be stuck with. You're not going to be able to find a variety of stations. It's going to almost become like satellite. Uh huh. So. Uh so like uh, my my dad always said like back in the day when he was a kid he could get all these different AM stations from like Chicago and and Kentucky oh, yeah. and all that. So why why can't we get stations like that anymore? You wonder. Well, you can, but I don't think the programming is there. Okay. Um, like it used to be. Like Larry Lou Jack had a WLS. You know, you used to listen to him early in the morning when you could get the signal. <laughs> The, the signals that carry that far are only available at certain times of the night. Uh-huh. Like KAAY in Little Rock, Arkansas was one that I used to listen to late at night when I was in high school. Hmm. And they used to do everything from, <laughs> oh, you know, album rock to, uh, to uh, uh, theatrical radio. Huh. You know, the mystery theater kind of Oh, thing. sure. Yeah. But, you know, when when stations in chams, of course, it's all a money thing to them, so all the good programming disappears. Uh-huh. It's the cheaper programming that you get. Huh. 
So, uh, my last question for you, and, and I want to first of all just say thank you for letting me do this interview with you, you know, even if you were under the weather and stuff, and it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's an honor to talk to somebody who uh, I can call, like, a, some, a, somebody to look up to more or less, like a role model, because I was a DJ at one time, and I worked for Pioneer Night for One, and that's where I got all my training and everything, and, and that's kind of where I got the love for doing interviews and things with media and broadcasting. So my last question for you is, any advice for any up-and-coming DJ? Ooh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Have a big bank account before you get in the business. <laughs> it's not... Uh, it's not all the glitz and glamour that uh, they used to portray it as. Um, you know, it's there's a lot more involved in the business than just being on the radio nowadays. You have to maintain websites. And you have to do a lot of personal appearances, which I love to do, but, uh. but there, there's, there's a lot more to it, uh, I guess. They might even have them you clean the toilets, too, uh, as oh, a part of your paycheck. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so. Yeah. I guess some advice would be um, um, try and find a format that you really like. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter what kind of music it is, or if you want to do a talk format, and and just try and stick with that. I've done all kinds of formats, but my true love is classic rock and blues. Uh -huh. And so it, it's tough for me now to find a job in those areas because they just don't exist like they used to. So twice about getting into radio. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I noticed you did some internet stuff, too. I, I did watch your three uh, YouTube shows of the Riverside Blues show, which actually kind of inspired me to find some of these artists online to uh, the Spotify app that I have through Facebook. Like, I've been jamming to uh, the Papa Chubby song, uh, uh, Daddy Played the Guitar, Mama uh, Played the Blues, no. Mama sang the blues or something like that, or Dad, okay. Daddy played the guitar. Mama sang the blues. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and but I've been yep. I've been jamming to that. I didn't even know he even existed, and uh, he has some good stuff out there. And then that uh, Billy D and the and the Hoodoo's, I've been yep. jamming to that as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was kind of cool to to see some of these uh, bands that I I never even heard of uh, be part of their show. Now, now you're getting it, Sean. You're getting it because. <laughs> That's kind of what the blues show is all about, is exposing people to music that they're not going to hear okay. on the radio. How did you discover these guys? Uh, a lot of research and a lot of word of mouth. Okay. You know, I've, I, over the years in radio, I worked out in California for a while in western North Dakota. And, and uh, just through the years, I, I, you know, hear of a lot of different bands from different people that listen across the country and they make suggestions so I'm always learning I don't know it all <laughs> well that's cool no I mean I, I really enjoyed it and uh, I wish you wished you could do more of those because they were very interesting shows I actually wish that and this is how I kind of wish for both of you and I uh, I wish we had a like what the people who like your fan base and my fan base which is way smaller of course uh, I wish we get together at least and like uh get more views on the stuff that we were producing because I noticed that on your YouTube channel that you like you got a good format out there but not many people are viewing the stuff and I don't know I don't understand why you know it's a good format for what you got yeah well we kind of ran into some snags trying to find sponsorship uh huh and uh, you know I guess maybe we started at a bad time of the year but there's a lot of legalities that you have to go through to get that program uh -huh. working so you know if without the sponsorships you you kind of run into a stone wall uh -huh. all right well it's to be expensive you need to bring a lawyer in and of course they take most of your money yeah i don't like to, i don't want to get into any of that crap i mean geez <laughs> all i want to do like like what i've been doing is just do my my format and then you know whether i get paid or i don't well i don't but i but i you know why do we have to drag in lawyers, you know? It's supposed to be all fun, right. you know? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the music rights and, you know, the royalties, that's yeah. become a big issue over the years, so you got to make sure that they're they're happy with what, you know, what you're using. Sure. And well, to get permission, it, it takes money. Yeah, I'm sure it does. And, uh, well, I tell you what, uh, thank you very much. You've been an excellent guest, guest number 25 on my show. <laughs> 
more or less. There's a feather in my cap. Yeah, you you uh, you uh, followed uh, the last person I interviewed. I, I said it was Doink the Clown, but there's another person I interviewed. Uh, there's a guy named Adam Rifkin who uh, made the movie Detroit Rock City. I'm sure you've seen before about oh, the sure. yeah, yeah about the movie Kiss and everything. Yeah, sure. Uh, he was before you. So. Oh yeah, I, I lived. I lived that movie. <laughs> Maybe you were in that movie and don't even know about it. <laughs> I, I could have been. I could have been. <laughs> but thank you very much for taking the time to let me do this interview with you, and uh, I wish you wish you success in the future, then, my friend. I uh, thank you very much, and uh, same back at you. I hope your show gets uh, gets on enough uh, viewerships that. Uh, and we both become world famous and rich. <laughs> and then we'll go on a big cruise together. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, man. Well, you take care, and you, and you have a good rest of the night. All right. Thanks. Yep. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was Kevin Hendrickson, and he is, uh, well, wow, he, very nice, very nice uh, man to talk to. He has his own radio show called the Riverside Blues Show, which can be heard on Sundays. I forgot yeah. to ask him which station is on, but I think he he does it remotely from the from his house though. So, but I forget which station is on, but I'll I'll figure that out. But anyway, uh, I just want to say thank you for, to everybody for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time right here on the Frankie Slauson Show.